This is Quad Crossfire HD6870, one of the most obscure multi-GPU setups, and a setup that perhaps shouldn't have existed in the first place. Today we'll have a closer look at these cards and at the performance in modern and older titles. However, to better understand just why this setup is so unique, we first need to go back in time a bit. First, let's go back to around mid-2011 when these cards were launched, and have a look at the GPU range on offer. First, on the Nvidia side, we had the Fermi GTX 550 Ti, 560 and 560 Ti on the mid-range, on the high-end the 570 and 580, and as their flagship the dual GPU GTX 590. Now, on the AMD side, we had the Terascale HD 6850, 6870 and 6950 on the mid-range, high-end HD 6970, and flagship their HD 6990. Now, what was a very popular thing to do back then was, instead of buying a single high-end GPU like the 580, what people would instead do is buy two mid-range GPUs and put them in SLI or Crossfire. In this way you would get better than high-end performance without having to pay for the high-end price. In most cases, to say 2560s or 2670s would run you less than a GTX 580, but give you more performance. Now, the people over at the Tell Corporation, a AMD board partner and parent company of Powercolor, had taken note of this trend, and during Computex of 2011 they presented the following, the Radeon HD 6870X2. Now, this was not an official AMD model like the 6990, but was specifically designed by Tull themselves and sold under three brands, Powercolor, VTX 3D, a subsidiary of Powercolor, and lastly this one, the Club 3D. All the same card, just with different stickers. Now this solution has a few benefits. Firstly, it's a more elegant way to run Crossfire. You only need uh, to buy one card, you only need uh, one PCIe slot, so no motherboard required with multiple PCIe slots and Crossfire supports. But lastly, it had another benefit in that it enabled a GPU setup that would normally be impossible. Now, to explain that, both AMD and Nvidia only shipped their higher tier GPUs with uh, two SLI or Crossfire connectors to enable for uh, three and four way GPU setups. And a regular HD 6870 only has one Crossfire connector, meaning you can only hook it up to one other card. However, with this, you got two HD 6870s on a uh, single card and you had a Crossfire connector. You might remember on the NVIDIA side there were a few cards very similar like this, most notably from EVGA with their GTX uh, 460 2 win and later 560 Ti 2 win, which also had an SLI connector, but that SLI connector was non-functional with NVIDIA stating that uh, it was a mistake and too late to be removed. AMD, however, has always been a little bit more liberal with their Crossfire uh, support. So with this card we can actually hook it up to another HD 6870X2 for a four-way HD 6870. Let's continue by having a closer look at these. First of all, they are pretty big at 300mm in length here compared with a reference cooler GTX 570. For cooling there are dual fans. Now unfortunately the fans on mine have seen better days, with one fan blade missing and another fan being non-original. We can also see the exposed copper heat pipes which stick out quite a lot and give these cars quite a cool look. To supply power there are two 8-pin PCIe connectors. Also interesting is that these both appear to be of a different revision. One has a normal black plastic cooler, but the other has this strange soft touch coating that's become very sticky over time. For video output, there's two times DVI, one HDMI 1.4a and two mini DisplayPort 1.2s. Turning the card around, we find eight memory modules. Each GPU has eight GDDR5 LPDA modules four on each side of the PCB for a total of one gigabyte per GPU. Memory is clocked at 1050 MHz, 
and with a quad data rate this is effectively 4200 MHz with a 256-bit memory bus. With the cooler off we can see that each GPU has direct contact with three copper heat pipes, which are then connected to the aluminum heat sinks. Now we can have a look at the front PCB and here we have the two AMD BARTS XT chips, the codename of the HD6870, and they are identical to the ones found in the reference HD6870. So 1120 stream processors with a GPU clock speed of 900 MHz. Surrounding the BARTS chips are the other four memory modules and each GPU has a 4 plus 2 phase VRM setup with a small heatsink. Between the two chips we have a Lucid Bridge chip. Now normally you would find a bridge chip by say PLX or AMD themselves, but here one by Lucid was chosen because it was readily available and cheaper. And lastly on the top left there is the all important crossfire connector. Here is how the cards look when installed. As you can see there is a lot of sag and with the hard drive cages installed in my Fractal Design R6 they only just barely fit. For benchmarking I've had to resort to using my personal Z86 based system as these cards wouldn't work with any motherboards with a PLX chip. This is a common issue with dual GPU cards. I have had to jerry rig my RM1000X PSU onto it to provide the four 8-pin PCIe power connectors needed. Now, I should note, I featured a lot of obscure hardware on this channel, which can often be a bit difficult to get working correctly with the right drivers, OS, etc. However, no setup has taken so much time and effort to get working correctly as this quad terascale setup. It's mind-bending. Random things like uh, system instability, drivers not wanting to install well, uh, performance difference between uh, OS with the same driver, which we'll get to uh, after the benchmarks, and uh, performance between drivers, performance where one driver would work well on one program but not on the other, and vice versa. It was absolutely mind-bending stuff, but in the end I did get it to work well, and I am quite pleased with how it turned out. Here we are in Windows. I found the best OS and driver setup to be Windows 7 64-bit with the 15.7.1 WHQL drivers. If we have a look into the device manager we can see we have four HD6800 display adapters. And if we go into the Catalyst control center we can see we have a crossfire setup of four GPUs. And for a more detailed look and to confirm the specifications, here's GPU Z. To give some context to the benchmark numbers, I've also tested an SLI GTX 570 setup, each with 2.5GB of VRAM, and a modern Pascal GTX 1060 3GB. In the MSI Afterburner overlay on the left, you can see the utilization, temperature and clock speed of each of the GPUs. Under that, you can see the video memory. Afterburner put the 4 times one gigabyte of VRAM together, but effectively it's still one gigabyte, so divide that number by 4. And on the bottom left there's a live view of the total system power consumption. Starting with the newest title, Dirt Rally from 2015, with the medium preset, and it runs well on this setup with decent frame times and relatively little micro stutter. GPU utilization is around 50 to 60 percent, with system power consumption around 470 watt total. Looking at the performance in the built-in benchmark, we can see a modest 29 percent performance increase for the average frame rate when going from 2 to 4 way crossfire, 2 way at 112 fps and 4 way at 144 fps. More surprisingly we can see bigger gains on the 1 percent low improving by 67% and the 0.1% low improving by 50. 
However, they are still quite easily beaten by the two GTX 570s, which were 12% faster with an average of 161 FPS and way better 1% and 0.1% lows. Moving on to Battlefield 4 from 2013, with the settings at Ultra. A side effect of crossfire in some titles is that the afterburner overlay starts flickering, but hope you can still see that the hardware is utilized very well here in the single player. The GPUs are at over 80% utilization most of the time, and power consumption is now at around 560 watts. By going to quad crossfire, Battlefield 4 showed a solid 65% increase in average frame rate, going from 81 to 134 FPS. What's also impressive is that the 1% low and 0.1% low also increased considerably, making overall for a very nice and playable experience in single player. The Quad 6870 setup also beat the two GTX 570s by 12%, with the 570s averaging 118 FPS. There were, however, no match for the 3GB Pascal GTX 1060, however, which scored 168 FPS average. 25% of the four 6870s. And because like myself you're probably curious about multiplayer performance, well it was mostly terrible. Even with the settings dialed back to medium, we were seeing performance ranging from somewhat playable at around 60 to 80 FPS, all the way down to massive stutters at around 20 FPS. Moving on to Tomb Raider from 2013 on the Ultra preset. Crossfire support in Tomb Raider is, well, nothing short of amazing, and the quadfire setup produces some spectacular results here. We're looking at GPU utilization in the high 80% all the way up to 99%, with system power draw well over 600 watts. Comparing 2 to 4 way crossfire, the average frame rate practically doubles, going from 78 FPS to 158 FPS, which is actually perfect scaling. Although where scaling wasn't perfect was 41% and 0.1% lows, which actually didn't really change at all, and 41% low it actually was worse than 2-way crossfire. But still, this is an epic average frame rate. Comparing it to the other GPUs, the true power of the Quad 6870s becomes more evident. Together they beat the Pascal GTX 1063GB by 8% with the 1060 averaging 146 FPS and the Quad Fire 6870s averaging 158 FPS. Now of course frame times on the 1060 were much better, but nevertheless this is an amazing result for this setup. Next up is Metro 2033 on the high preset. All the way back from 2010 this was one of the games reviewers used when these cards were launched. Now Metro is known for being well optimized for multi-GPU, and it does run well. We're looking at around 50 to 70% GPU utilization, with total power draw hovering around 500 watts. The scaling to 4-way crossfire could have been better, gaining an extra 31% performance over 2-way, scoring 136 FPS average to 104. The 1% low improved by about the same amount, but the 0.1% low did not. Compared to other setups, the 4-way 6870s were able to comfortably stay ahead of the SLI GTX 570s, which scored 114 FPS average. The GTX 1063GB did however have the upper hand at 149 FPS average, 10% ahead of the 4 6870s. Strangely, like all setups, the 1060 really struggled on the 0.1% lows. GTA 5 is one of my go-to titles for testing NVIDIA SLI setup as it scales really well with great frame times. For Crossfire, however, this is not the case. Here the cards are at only around 20-30% to utilization with massive stutters and frame time spikes. Actually, 4-way Crossfire made matters worse in GTA 5, decreasing performance by 13% to an average of 71 FPS and with way worse 1% and 0.1% lows. As you can see by the footage, this is the perfect example of what happens when a game does not have proper crossfire support. The GTX 570s made quick work of the 6870s, averaging 134 FPS with vastly superior 1% and 0.1% lows. Like I said, SLI truly runs brilliantly on GTA 5. And last but not least, can it run Crisis? 
here with Crisis 2 from 2011 on the Ultra preset. Now Crisis is known for using all the GPU power it can get its hands on, and the GPU utilization was fantastic, ranging from around 70 to 95% utilization most of the time. And this was reflected by the system power draw, which saw peaks with well over 600 watts. Going from 2 to 4 way crossfire, performance increased by an impressive 61% to an average of 114 FPS. The 1% and 0.1% lows also increased by a decent amount, making for quite a nice gaming experience overall. Just like in Tomb Raider, we can see that when the cards are firing on all cylinders, the performance is pretty astounding, here with the Quad 6870s also managing to outpace the 3 GB GTX 1060 by 5%, with the 1060 averaging 109 FPS. The 1060 was better on the 1% and 0.1% lows, but the 6870s are not that far behind. The dual GTX 570s also performed admirably here, scoring an average of 91 FPS. And just to show what happens when you run quad crossfire on tiles that don't have good support, well, here's Hitman 2, which turned fluorescent green. Pretty cool, but probably not as the developers had intended. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, very new title, only runs on a single GPU and gives a black image. Amazingly, GTA 4 does support crossfire, albeit only two-way maximum. Apart from the odd micro stutter, it will run pretty decently on a single 6870X2. And because I couldn't resist not trying it, here's what happens when you force Battlefield 5 to run on four HD 6870s. As a start, I've had to lower the resolution to 1024 by 768 to prevent the video memory from maxing out. And here in the main menu you can already see that all kinds of things are going horribly wrong. Apart from the flickering, actually not all letters of the menu text are rendering, so choosing a game mode is a bit of a guess. Now, finally, in a game of Team Deathmatch you can see that all the ground environment textures are flickering wildly in a checkerboard pattern. And what you can also see is that the RAM usage is going absolutely haywire at over 15 GB used. Now, when running Battlefield 5 normally on my GTX 1060, the RAM usage is only about 10 GB in total, so there is a lot of things going wrong behind the scenes. In terms of performance, we're actually running at around 30 to 40 GP percent GPU utilization, with FPS ranging from between 15 to 13 FPS. Now, I do suspect you'd probably get better performance just simply by disabling Crossfire and running on a single card, but truly, this is far more amusing. For a synthetic test, I ran 3D Mark Skydiver. Just like in Tomb Raider, the scaling is perfect here, going from just under 16,000 points to 31,723 with Quad Crossfire. They beat the SLI 570s by 39%, but were also 29% behind the GTX 1060. And if anyone wants to run a Crossfire TerraScale setup, please do so under Windows 7, as the performance difference between Windows 10 with the same driver is just wild. In some games, double the performance when running under Windows 7. Now those are quite some numbers, and what's become pretty clear is that when the cards do run well and the game has crossfire support, the performance is pretty amazing, but also that that's only rarely the case. You see, I've picked these games specifically because I knew there'd be a good chance that crossfire would run well on them, and then uh, when I got everything running, I tailored the detail settings specifically, so that the one gigabyte of frame buffer uh, that these cars effectively have would not become the limiting factor. And also, like I briefly showed the Shadow of the Tomb Raider, in practically all modern titles, you can forget a setup like this running well. One thing I will also note is that I was quite surprised and impressed with the cooling solution of these cards. In the most demanding uh, scenarios, temperatures would only really get up to around 70 to 75 degrees, and while they were very loud, it was mostly because the fans on these cars are not great anymore. Which brings me to the final question. These cars are very uncommon, and a setup with two of them even more so. 
In fact, I believe this will be the first video on YouTube showing a setup with two of these cards. But why were they so rare? Because back then, not a lot of people bought them, and right now in the second-hand market, you practically can't find them anymore. And well, because I believe back then, they were a tough sell. At 520 US dollars at launch, you could buy two regular HD 6870s and still have quite a lot of cash left over. So why would you? Uh, even though these did have the advantage of only being a single card, most people back then did have a motherboard um, with crossfire support and a case with enough room. So you'd be better off just getting two regular 6870s. And for a setup of two of them, you'd be spending a thousand dollars on effectively 6870s. And if you were spending that much money, you'd want something a little more premium, like say a GTX 590 or HD 6990. What was of course also a rather large downside is that you could have all of this processing power, but still only have one gigabyte of usable video memory. And even back in 2011, one gigabyte was not a lot. So that's why I believe that one of the reasons why these cards have now fallen into obscurity. Now interestingly, these were not the last cards to implement the concept of combining two mid-range GPUs to together provide greater than high-end performance. Because two GPU generations later, Asus came out with this, the Mars 760X2, but that is for another video. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this video. This has really taken a long time to put together and was quite a headache at some time, but um, I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like, and if you want to be kept up to date on future projects, why not consider subscribing? Also, I'm keen to know your thoughts, so do please leave a comment below what you think of this setup. Well, that was all, and bye-bye.